you have to love that passion. God bless college football. Hello, America. Welcome to College Football Live. I'm Marty Smith with Joey Galloway and David Pollock, and we're here to break down on a Tuesday a beautifully chaotic week number two in the 2019 season. No better place to start than this week's ultimate performance presented by BMW, and there's nobody in the nation more deserving than LSU quarterback Joe Burrow. Joey football went crazy against the Texas Longhorns. The senior was able to get the Tigers out of Austin with a win by throwing for 471 yards and four touchdowns. Those 471 yards, second most passing yards in a game in LSU history. So, Joey, I'm going to start with you. How do you define Burrow's progression from last year to this year? Last year, he felt like he was a game manager, uh, didn't make these kind of throws in crunch situations. Uh, the throw he made on the third and 17 uh, late in the fourth when they needed to put more points on the board to put this game away was probably the best throw I've ever seen him make uh, with a blitz in his face. Guy coming in front of him, he steps up and hits a receiver across the field, scores a touchdown. I think he changes the conversation that we now have about this LSU football team that Joe Burrow can carry this team if he has to. It's going to be fun now to see him continue to develop and see what this LSU team can do in the SEC West. It's, it's crazy. And, and the description of the craziest, most puzzling thing I've ever seen in my life. Joey, every four-minute drill you've ever worked on consisted of what, Joey? Running, running the, the football, run get it. a few first downs, and we get out of here alive. That's every four-minute offense. LSU in the shotgun. Here you go. Four minutes left in the ball game. First play, we're going to throw it. They're throwing the ball all over the yard. They get backed up third and 17. Game on the line. Just run a draw, boys. Just run a draw, punt. We're DBU. We're LSU. We play phenomenal defense, right? This is all we need. Nah, bro. Blitz comes in. Look at this step up in the pocket. Deliver a dime in stride on third and 17. This goes from a team that was built around the run game, around tempo, controlling with defense, to a team now in LSU that this LSU team is built on passing the football early and often, and that will define how good their season is. And I want to see if this continues. It's one thing to do it against a Texas team that's in the Big 12 that's used to throwing the ball around. They're going to give you some man-to-man -man coverage. I want to see what happens when they get against an SEC defense like an Alabama that's going to mix some coverages, give them different yep. looks, if they have the same attitude and say, hey, Joe Burrow, go win this game for us. You said the key word right there, Galloway, Alabama. So I ask you both, starting with Pollock, is this the year that the Tigers put it all together with all of that athletic talent, now a wide open offense and a nasty defense to dethrone Alabama in the SEC West, David? Can, can I stop you right there, Marty? Uh, you, you just said a what defense? A dominant defense? Nasty. That's DBU. Nasty. I didn't see it. Nasty I, I saw defense. a nasty on the other side defense. I saw a nasty defense. It's pat so I think we need to – Pump the brakes. This is the first time we've ever felt optimistic in, an, in at least three years that I can think of, two or three years, that LSU had a legitimate chance to knock off Alabama. I know they got firepower now offensively. They, they had, didn't have one, not two. They had three guys go over 100 yards offensively. Defensively, I have some question marks about this defense. Pass rush was a legitimate concern for most of the game um, for them. And in the back end, golly, we're used to seeing them lock down people and, and shut down defensively. This is the most confident I've felt about LSU, Joey, in a long time because I know they can score. But, I mean, they're going to have to play some better defense to beat Alabama. Yeah, Sam Ellinger threw the ball for 400 yards and four touchdowns. If they let Tua do that, they will lose to Alabama. Simple as that. Alabama's yeah. defense will be better than Texas. And so as you look at this LSU, we've not seen uh, this conversation about LSU in, in past years where it's their defense that we're worried about now. But they were bad. They were simply bad against, against Texas. They're going to have to be better. Bad but nasty? We'll see. Nars It'll be interesting. Nars There's no question that LSU is among the college football elite. So let's take a look now at this week's college football rankings presented by PlayStation. We mentioned LSU. They're the big movers in the polls this week, jumping into the top four after that huge win against the Longhorns. The big sliders, the Michigan Wolverines, who after escaping Army in double overtime, dropped three spots down to 10th. Week two was weird, fellas. A couple teams that produced concerning performances out of the Big Ten, which were Nebraska and Michigan. Michigan's 2-0, but they barely survive Army. 
and Nebraska loses to Colorado in overtime. So which of these two programs most concerns you following week two? David. Uh, it's definitely Michigan. Um, you know, I, I know Nebraska lost. I didn't think Nebraska was going to be ready in year two. Harbaugh, dude, we've had years of this. We changed our offensive coordinator. We couldn't punch Army in the mouth and move the ball on Army. We got issues. They're fumbling the ball. They're a nonprofit organization right now the way they're giving the ball away. Good Lord. I mean, they've been fumbling the ball left and right, committing turnovers. I got news for you. Shea Patterson still doesn't look like he's developed into Harbaugh's next great quarterback, and he's making reads. His eyes keep coming down. He keeps scrambling instead of throwing the football, going through his progression. So if you're not worried about Michigan, you didn't watch the first two weeks. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold off on the Michigan thing. We watched Army, who was a 30-point underdog to Oklahoma last season, uh, take Oklahoma to overtime. Oklahoma then goes on to get in the playoffs. So I'm going to give Army – I mean, I'm going to give Michigan sort of a pass in this situation. We'll see them next week and find out uh, what they're going to do. Uh, it, but this Nebraska team – uh, the week before, their defense created five turnovers is how they won the game. Then they come yep. into last week, and their defense gives up 24 points in the fourth quarter to Colorado. Now, this is a Nebraska team that a lot of people believed in. I didn't believe it. Pollock, I don't know if you believed it because they no. were a four-win team last season. And yep. So a lot of people thought they would win the West. They have not looked like a very good football team through two weeks because they've been inconsistent in both sides of the football. They're not doing any one thing well. So moving forward, Wisconsin's looking like Wisconsin, like they always do. Iowa's looking pretty good. I don't know what this Nebraska team is going to be, but they better eliminate their mistakes the same as you're talking about Michigan. One team we all believe in, certainly the number one ranked Clemson Tigers. They head to the Carrier Dome on Saturday to face Syracuse. Remember, just a couple years ago, Syracuse pulled the upset there, but boy, they had a rough one last weekend. They got boat raced by Maryland. Let's see what happens on Saturday. 7.30 on ABC and the ESPN app. Coming up, hear the unique analogy Tennessee head coach Jeremy Pruitt used to describe the state of the volunteer program. It was a really interesting one. And today, ESPN released its list of the top 150 teams in the history of college football. Which team is the greatest of all time? Find out. Coming up, we'll discuss on College Football Live. And you know he threw a couple of aights in there because it is Coach Pruitt, and he likes to say aight. So, fellas, I ask you, on Rocky Top, is it time for patience or panic? Joey Galloway. Absolute panic they're over two <laughs> they, they better beat chattanooga because after that they got georgia florida so i don't know who on this schedule outside of chattanooga you are picking tennessee to beat they have looked terrible through two games at least in the first half of byu they had a lead but then they gave it away yeah did, did the mice survive by the way did they did they make it i didn't see Marty? that movie. i don't remember okay. I, I don't i don't think well i don't remember means they didn't um I think it's definitely time for panic. It's def it's Defcon one. It's uh it's it's not looking good. Um, you know it's 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 a bad situation, man. You, 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 first week you saw defensive mental mistakes and alignment and stuff like that, and then last week you give up an unexplainable play late in the game when you're up to just try to seal it. it makes absolutely no sense what they're doing. Um, yeah, Chattanooga, Florida, Georgia, Mississippi State, Alabama. Good luck. UCLA, let's head out west. They're a bit of a mess right now as well. Here's what head coach Chip Kelly had to say about the Bruins right now. You don't tear up the root of the tree to see if it's growing. You, know, you just keep watering it, you keep growing it and doing what you're supposed to do. And, and that's what happens over the course of time. You know, I think we all live in a society where we want a quick fix and an instant pill, but uh, it doesn't exist. The unique thing about our game, you don't have any preseason games, so you just jump right into it and some of these kids that are playing right now. I've never really played in the games. All right, guys, take a look at this. This letter was sent by UCLA Monday to season ticket holders who attended the San Diego State loss, offering four free tickets to this weekend's Oklahoma game. <laughs> Yikes. Is it time for patience or panic out west at UCLA, Pollock? Man, I, I feel bad, but it's, it's panic, man. I mean, it, what... Do you remember when Chip Kelly was that offensive savant? Yes. He was that dude, Joey. 14 oh, yeah. points both games, Cincinnati and San Diego State. Like, 
it's not working. It's, it's very – I didn't think Chip Kelly would turn UCLA around and make them a, a national championship contender, but you did think they'd come in, have an offensive spark, and do something different. I mean, I, he's 3-14, and 14, something like that, or 2-14. and 14. I mean, it's, it's been bad, man. And I, I, I agree with the patience thing, but usually year two, what we've seen in college football is the year that it turns around. Man, it doesn't look good, and it's time to panic. Hey, hey, Marty, you didn't give us a whole lot of wiggle room on these first two questions, big fella. These, you, you brought up two programs that have been absolutely terrible. It's rough. You're right. It's it, rough. They're Galloway. adding 14 points. And, and you look at UCLA. They got Oklahoma and then Washington State next. I mean, so they're going to be 0-4. I mean, you're, you're yeah. not going to even come close to these next two teams if you're just going to score 14 points. You are in trouble. They're not ranked in the top 100 in a lot of offensive categories, and that's what Chip Kelly is known for. So it is absolute panic time for Tennessee, for UCLA. And, Marty, I hope this next question, I hope you got a better question for us because you haven't given us much options on those first two. I'm not too sure. I think it's an easier one, but we'll see. Let's stay out west with Washington. We all expected they'd be pretty good. With Jacob Eason at quarterback, Chris Peterson is a very good head coach. But, gentlemen, they lost to Cal. They lost to Cal over the weekend. They lost to Cal last year. You act like that's the biggest stunner in the world. Well, look, man, no offense to Cal, but I expect (laughs) Washington to beat Cal. Jacob Eason is more than capable at quarterback. Chris Peterson has led the Huskies to the college football playoff in the past. It's Cal. I don't think it's time to panic yet because they lost to Cal a year ago and still went to the Rose Bowl. So they also lost to Auburn a year ago to start the season. So they retooled and rebuilt. I think what you saw, too, is Jacob Eason, we know he has a ton of ability. And we said, hold off. Let's get through the Cal game first because Cal's got one of the best secondaries in the country, bar none. They haven't been able to score points very often at all, but they can play some great defense. Jacob Eason showed he's not ready yet. And that offense for Washington, let's be honest now, by the way, Chris Peterson, we give him a lot of credit, and he deserves a lot of credit what he's done over the years. The last several years, Washington's offenses have sputtered and have not been explosive offenses. they got to figure that out. I know Jacob Eason's a new quarterback. He's got a big arm. That offense is now sputtering on over a season plus. they got to get that thing worried or fixed, excuse me. Yeah, I think it is is panic time, especially if we're talking about opportunity to get to the playoff it's panic time for anybody in the Pac-12 that has a loss already I mean if you look around the country uh, the SEC is looking strong so the the winner of the SEC will get in Uh, Ohio State in the Big Ten is looking strong eight the in the ACC Clemson has a cakewalk they'll get in Oklahoma's looking good again Texas is looking good so if you're Pac-12 and you're thinking we'd like to get to the playoff then yeah you're sort of in a panic because your undefeated team in Utah the problem is on the rest of their schedule in, in this season, they don't have a team ranked in the top 20. And so they're going to have to not just win, but blow teams out and then hope that Oregon gets in highly ranked and beat them to get in. So if I'm the Pac-12, I'm a little worried. Utah doesn't play Oregon, doesn't play Stanford. Not that Stanford's anything to, you know, write no, they're about not. this year anyways. But they do play at Washington State, who should be a top 20 team at that point because – we all agree Washington State's going to beat UCLA. That's Hope, going to happen. Hopefully. So so I think, yeah, it, it, the strength of schedule isn't going to be great. But if you watch Utah, I like what I see from them. And they're going to be the Pac-12 team that's going to be flying the banner this year. I kind of look forward to seeing what's going to happen with SC now with Keaton Slovis. Dude. How about Keaton Slovis, America? Yeah. Wow. Looks that young man came out spinning it around the yard, gentlemen. That dude was awesome. Yeah. Going to be fun I, I to you, watch I, them. I, I, I'll, be the, I'll be the first to tell you, I thought the season was over. I, I so thought the I. season Everybody was did. absolutely over. I thought Clay Helton was now out the door. Slovis for Heisman, baby. Let's Slovis, go. Baby. <laughs> Slovis and Joey. You better get, you better get the s- hardware. Hey, you football better get left. to Slovis. You better get to Slovis. Left. USC QB, baby. Of course, tempered by Galloway. A lot of football left. I yeah. love it. All right. Who do- it's interesting in timing. Uh, Lin Swan steps down. Lin Swan is the person that gave – Clay Helton, his extension of his contract. So now if I'm Clay Helton, I'm a little worried because whoever the next AD is, 
ADs always want to come in and make a big coaching hire on the football side. And I think it just opens that door. He's going to have to have a terrific season to avoid that. But either way, Clay Helton better hope that Urban Meyer is not interested in being the next USC head coach. <laughs> Dang, that name's just going to keep flying around about coaches, ain't it? Um, yeah. No, it, it definitely uh, does always mean that. It's trouble. But, by the way, Lynn Sloan always been class personified his whole life. I've loved watching him play, watching him speak, and – um, whatever he's going to do, congratulations on the future. But Clay Helton, just win. Don't worry about that. Just win eight, nine, ten games. We good. We good. <laughs> Last That's weekend it. certainly 19. helped. Yes, it did. This is the 150th whatever. anniversary of college football, and ESPN is blowing it out. We put together an expert panel to determine the greatest teams of all time. Let's take a look at that list, which was released today. Here's six through ten. Alabama checks in a couple times here. 2009, it was Nick Saban's first title with the Tide, and the 1979 Tide, Bear Bryant's last title at Alabama. And don't forget those Miami Hurricanes in 2001, they're at number seven, that produced 17 future first round NFL draft picks. That seems awful low. All right, here's five to one. The Clemson Tigers, last season, they check in at number five, led by freshman Trevor Lawrence, the Tigers became the first team since 1897 to go 15-0 in a season. At number four, the 95 Corn Huskers from Lincoln. That team, led by dynamic QB Tommy Frazier, dominated opponents, scoring 35 points at least in every game they played. Checking in at third is the 1972 USC Trojan Group. They beat six ranked opponents that season and were led by future Hall of Famer Lynn Sw Swan, who we just discussed who averaged 20 yards a catch. At number two, another Trojan team, this one, the 2004 group, led by Pete Carroll and Heisman winners Matt Leinart and Reggie Bush. They won by 25 points a game average. The best team in college football history, gentlemen, the 1971 Nebraska Cornhuskers, led by future Heisman winner Johnny Rogers. They held 10 of their opponents, guys, to less than seven points and were yeah. able to win the game of the yeah. century over number two ranked Oklahoma, 35 to 31. That is a hell of a list. What do you think, Galloway? I think when people look at these lists, they got to realize this is on stats and numbers and what this team did in their particular season. It's not like you're saying that the 2001 Miami Hurricanes couldn't beat the 1971 Nebraska Cornhuskers. As <laughs> that's not a true statement. But if you look at what these teams have done in their stats, uh, it, very impressive, all 10 teams. But it's always fun to look back and see those games that you forgot about and some of those players you forgot about. And it's very interesting in that way to enjoy the history of 150 years of college football. So you're saying Charlie Rogers, Rogers could not run Ray Lewis and, and uh, I don't think so. <laughs> Sean Taylor and no, company? I don't think so. You don't think that would go well? Um, nah. No, but I, I will say this. When you, when you read and you research, because I, I wasn't alive in 71 and I didn't watch that stuff, it's kind of cool to see the past teams and to see the most dominant teams. And I really think the only way you can go and say who the most dominant team ever is, did you beat a bunch of really good teams? And that year, Nebraska, they beat two, three, and four in that season in the final poll. So – and 17, if you want to throw that in there. But that's pretty amazing when you're talking about beating Oklahoma, Alabama, uh, and Colorado and wiping them out, some of them out, by 30 points. So Nebraska had the best, quote-unquote, resume. Hey, a forward pass, Joe. Did you see that? That was a forward yeah, look pass. At, yeah, look at, look at this. Look at this guy. <laughs> like, when you watch this film right here, can you imagine – this on your iPad nowadays, and, and this is the game film you got to watch, nice and great. No HD in that replay. No instant <laughs> replay? Wait a minute. Did he no, cross the goal so. line? No. I don't all think right, so. Fellas, all, all right, fellas. All right, all right. It's time for That's What It's All About. We're going to start highlighting the good in the sport. And I want to tell you, Tennessee Volunteer Nation, you need to be absolutely proud of yourselves. Think about this. As we stated, it's been a really tough season on Rocky Top, but when a schoolboy in Florida was bullied for wearing a homemade UT t-shirt on Collegiate Spirit Day, the Vol Nation responded in droves. Vol Shop mass produced a replica of that little boy's homemade t-shirt and what happened the vol nation bought more than 16,000 of those t-shirts awesome. i That's love awesome. this it is a reminder to every single one of us that kindness wins and i'm so appreciative of that gesture vol nation been a really tough year for jeremy pruitt so far but that is what it's all about and and we know marty this because we spend so much time joey around the sport 
There's so much good that these teams are doing for their communities and these players are doing to help so many people. Great example. Yeah, Tennessee, you're 0 2, but awesome example of uh, kindness. Tip of the cap. Yeah, and it's great to see their fans are still locked in and their fans still see good in the sport. Hang in there. I love the t shirt. I think Paul should buy all three of us one. <laughs>